Welcome back. So um, I'm, uh, this is uh, lunchtime and we're talking some chi talk. Yeah, so I'm, uh, my name is Ellie Cohen for people that would watch it later. I'm a medical uh, Qigong practitioner and instructor, energy healing coach, and we choose a topic every week uh, and, um, and just kind of like uh, open the conversation uh, it's kind of turning into Q&A or masterminds and people uh, uh, in the last few times um, kind of share their wisdom, their healing stories and also some questions. So it's really very casual, kind of a free flow, um, informal talk that uh, can actually go pretty deep into philosophical issues and things like that. And today I kind of wanted to, um, let's start with a little bit of practice actually before we start like a, a little ceremony, our opening ceremony. Let's start it with a few deep breaths. So just sit where, wherever you are and close your eyes if you will, relax your body. And if you're just listening to this as a playback, please do the same, you know, enjoy this energy, enjoy the uh, opportunity to go into your your mind into your body so when we close the eyes it's just draw our attention inwardly more and when we put our attention on the breath we are actually kind of calming down and when we're deepening the breath so let's take a few deeper inhalation and exhale from the mouth what happens when you exhale from the mouth there's a kind of a nervous system. The nervous system knows when you exhale from the mouth, it releases stress and tension. So when you inhale, softer and deeper. So slower, just kind of like go a little slower with your breath, a little deeper and even softer. And exhale from the mouth. And when you exhale, Try to kind of release stress and tension from the shoulders. And maybe notice where today you're holding tension. And we're going to talk about some of these things. So inhale. See if you can inhale a little deeper into the lower abdomen, maybe. Try to make this breath even longer. See, how deeply do you feel the breath? Do you feel it all the way to the lower abdomen? Maybe you feel it even below. Do you feel it in, into the sit bones? Some people would feel the inner thigh, especially if you take a very soft, gentle, silky-like breath, like a silk, all the way down to the legs to the knees. Yeah, let's make it even longer. It's very interesting that you discover that every time you inhale longer, you can actually make it even longer than the one before. A little softer and a little gentler. And on the exhale, just soften the whole body. And sink into your chair, sink your muscles. Tension disappears. Nice. Nice and open the eyes. Nice. Just a few minutes. And let's put the one hand on the heart. And then the other hand would press to the side. Here, I'll shift myself so you see. And then you look over to one side. And you look to the hand. Mm -hmm. You look to the other side, and then we're opening the heart meridian and back to the hand. Nice and wiggle the fingers, wiggle, wiggle. Nice, let's do it with the other side. So push the hands to one side and look over to the other side. Shoulders down and palms erected. And look to the palm. Look away. Nice. Look to the palm. 
and bring both hands to the heart and put your mind in the heart center breathe into this area and make more space there as if the breath kind of opens up so as you, you just visualize as if the breath kind of making more space in the chest exhale from the mouth nice one more breath Exhale, soften, soften the heart, soften the shoulders, nice and relax the hands down. Beautiful. And let's see if you can connect with putting both hands kind of like by the side and then see if you can feel any energy between your hands. Yeah, so this of attuning to your energy and maybe you have a small ball like this and see if you can feel it even when the hands are more separate from each other so if the hands are separate how where do you feel it and where you stop feeling it and where do you feel it the most and where do you feel it yeah so where is that chi ball where is it where is it the most powerful between your hand so it could be like an a few inches, like a couple of inches, or it could be a foot, or it could be three feet. So where, how much energy you have today? <laughs> how much you have today? Where is it the most powerful? Nice, and give it a name. Let's give it a name. Let's give it a name, whatever you like to invite into your your life so this ball of energy i call it love i can call it what do you think you need today i can call it patience maybe i need more patience maybe i need more self-love maybe i need what do i need today so you know where you are find where you are and what you'd like to have And as you open the chi ball, you open to all direction. You open your peripheral vision to the energy field all around you, to summer energy. There's a lot of energy in nature and we are not separate from it. Even when we sit here, you can open your attention to a bigger energy field, like the trees, the animals. And then from that infinite potential, gather the energy you need, it might be strength or love or courage or sense of trust in what you're doing what is it and then so call it a name and then put it back into your belly so let's put it in the belly with the hands of the belly on the belly and feel as if it travels through the body so if you asked for trust or love or whatever it is see it travels through your body into the bloodstream and sending a signal to your cells and to your brain that you are in the state of that energy right now. And how does it feel to feel that? Yeah, so if we're connecting with the idea of, let's say, love, how does it feel to feel love inside of yourself? And let's open the hands to the side and put open the eyes. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. It's so nice to connect with this practice. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk a little bit, but open also to conversation for you. So I'm going to just say a few words and then invite you to share what you think or any question that you may have. Uh, it's all good. So some sharing, some questions. The idea of this talk is to just open this conversation to, to the idea of healing energy to kind of spread it. It's open to everybody, it, not only members or anything like that. It's really open to the public. 
and the idea is to spread the the vibration of of, of self healing, self love, understand. So what I chose today is to talk about chi, the concept of chi. You know, a lot of people there's new uh, evidence now. There's new articles that. Uh, become very famous about how Qigong is good for COVID-19. And it's, it's just, uh, it, it was written by Harvard professors and professor from the uh, hospital in Boston, in Massachusetts. Uh, main, the, uh, I think it's Boston General Hospital in Massachusetts. And it, it kind of create headlines and a lot of people are interested in Qigong right now. And I'm seeing it in, in my practice and, and seeing it with my uh, colleagues that teach Qigong too. So I wanted to kind of like get this idea of the concept of Qi. What is Qi and how it connects to the paradigm of, of healing energy? Uh, and we can go really deep, but uh, I don't want to keep it very theoretical because we can go very, in Taoism, you can really, <laughs> can really go into very philosophical and theoretical venues, but you can also keep it very practical. So it'd be nice to have maybe both, but it, more practical for people just starting to connect with the idea of chi. So um, chi is life force energy. If you look it up, vital energy, kind of like in, in different tradition, they have different name, prana in, in, uh, in Hindu tradition, which is again, life force, life force energy moving through the body. And, uh, but really the concept of energy as chi is, uh, is, is, is not only in the human realms, but it's also outside. So energy is everywhere, and Taoist tradition, Chinese medicine, based their philosophy and their and Chinese medicine based on the idea of that everything is energy, and everything is always in flux and always in flow and always in ch changing, and that's one of the principle. Yeah, there's the core principle of how energy moves, like universal laws, and one of them is constant change, and. Um, so we see it as in the physical realm, but in Taoism say that the physical realm, like what we see with our five senses is only 4% of all the energy that are available to us. Yeah. When we talk about uh, healing energy in the human realm, a lot of time, you know, the chi, the, the character chi in Chinese started uh, meant in the beginning, like thousands of years ago, me meant steam came off of rice. So there's, uh, so that, that was the character. It's very pictogrammic in Chinese. It was actually meant uh, steam uh, that comes over when, <laughs> over from rice. So it's really the, the idea of formless energy, of transformation was embedded into the concept, into the, into the term qi. And uh, so when we talk, we talk about a formless energy and we talk about transformation. So what's form, formless energy versus form? So in uh, Taoism, we had this idea of, of the manifestation of the chi, yeah? the things that we see with our five senses. And that's the manifestation. And that's only 4% of the energy that exists in the universe. And then 96 is, it can be felt but cannot be seen. So what we're talking about is talking about perception, beliefs, emotions, things that we cannot see with the naked eye, but sometimes we can feel them. And that really was the concept of, uh, of Qi in the beginning is this invisible energy. So, and a lot of time in Qigong, we work with this form and formless. <laughs> yeah, and that brought the concept of yin and yang in different, different realms. The, you see the yin and yang in nature too. So we talk about energy. A lot of people think about there's negative energy, right? Sometimes in Qigong, we still clear the negative energy or positive energy. But really, it's very important to understand when we talk about the concept of qi, that there's no good or bad. There's actually no good and bad. There's just energy. And energy sometimes contracts and sometimes expands. Like sometimes you see a river flow, and sometimes there is a dam or few stones in the river, it creates congestion and then it flows again. And then sometimes there's clouds and they forming kind of like this intense energy. And then all of a sudden there's a rain and it drops and release the energy. So actually the uh, concept of, of Qi is the flow between positive and negative. So the flow between yin and yang. So we actually cannot have a life force without that flow. So really the energy is 
there cannot be energy without tension. So the concept of tension is actually the concept of life. There's no life without tension. There's no life between, it's kind of like you have a waterfall, you have the water flowing from here to here, and that flow, that flow is uh, that energy that the waterfall creates, that vital force could not be achieved without the difference in height. So, so the concept, so it's very interesting to understand that um, <laughs> intellectually, we won't go there uh, a lot because I want it to be more practical, but to understand that the concept of, of, of energy is there's no good or bad. There's also, there's always a flow and flux of energy from tension to flow, from, from contraction to openness. And that's, um, and that's uh, outside when we look in nature, it's always like that and, and never change. And there's no only good or not, whatever bad is. There's not only sunny days. Yes, yeah? so that's important to understand. And then in the human realm, we are kind of a reflection of the universe. So the same things happen inside of our body, inside of our mind, inside of our, our energy. But in the human realm, we have the mind. So the mind and the body. So you can think about the mind and the body is the two edges of, of uh, formless and form. <laughs> yeah. So this is what we see yeah and feel and then there's the thoughts perceptions you know old patterns that are coming into play and that's the formless that's the formless type of energy and they always flow to each other and from each other so a certain thought would create some sort of energy in the body and different thoughts would create some sort of emotion that would create some sort of chemical reaction in the body and you'll feel it and you react to it so how does that connect to the to the uh, to the whole idea of, of self-healing is, uh, is, is you can see how it connects. Yeah, it's, it's, it's how, how, we re how we respond to what's going on around us. So whenever we are, we are, don't like something, we have aversion towards something, <clears throat> towards something that we see as negative, as, as bad, as not feeling, not feeling like a tension, when we are reacting to it with resistance, it tends to stay. <laughs> and whenever we crave the good, it tends to go away. <laughs> so when we, so we have, we have a, usually a pattern that we go into, yeah, a reaction, a habit pattern that we, we all go into it. And that, that tends to so we are creating we are recreating uh the energy in our body so we have we are we are participant yes so, so we are a participant in the creation of energy we can influence the and this is where self-healing come into play when we notice hey you know what we can actually be participant in what's going on in our body in what's going on in our mind we can participate in this process we can choose yeah, so the idea of choice, to choose to do something, to choose to breathe deeper, to choose to slouch all day, or to choose to see things in a certain way, to see, a, like, to believe that this is very hard, this is going to be, healing myself will be very hard. You know, to, to believe in such beliefs, or to, whatever cho choices we make, so this is the idea of choice, is the idea of really self-healing. And uh, there's really also two, two uh, engagement with healing, uh, kind of like, almost like yin and yang. And one is being receptive, listening to wherever you are. So listening and being curious is, is one stage of, of self-healing. And then the other one is activation. So acknowledgement of where you are and activation. Activation is the choice, the, the action you take. And it could be a mind thing. It could be like a practice of gratitude, right? Or a practice of, um, you know, a practice of changing the way you think about a thing, about changing your posture. It could be a, a change in your, what you choose to do today or after lunch, or it could be so activation is what you decide to do and in qigong 
what's nice about this practice is that it combines all of these. Yeah, it combines movement, combines breath, it combines uh, heart intention, it combines uh, awareness of where you are. Yeah, so the combination uh, in Qigong, uh, and it's very accessible because it's very easy. Yeah, it's very easy. It's moving. Movement feels good in the body. Move, moving the energy. Yeah, if you have a blocked energy. So in Chinese medicine, we see the body as as rivers of energy, and sometimes they get blocked, and that creates stagnation in an area. So stagnation in an area is kind of like a dam on the river. That's all. And so how do we open it? So movement, stretches, breath. And it's important to understand also in the realm of self-healing is the idea of um, raising your, your energy vibration. And what does that mean? And, you know, we're all looking to feel always expanded in expanded state, <laughs> in a flow state. But there's no flow state all the time. Like there's no clear sky all the time. So it's, it's, it's just bound to, we bound to have rainy days and and that's good actually that's that's actually very healthy it's very healthy to feel angry it's very healthy to feel sad it's actually very healthy and so whenever we're starting to embrace that whenever we start to accept that this is natural this is what makes me alive when we see everything as the al alive as aliveness then we are able to actually unbound unbound quicker and transform the energy quicker Whenever we react with aversion or clinging is whenever we create a uh, kind of trouble for ourselves. Whenever we wake up in the morning and feeling kind of grumpy or not feeling bad, not feeling good. And then what we do is that we really hate it. <laughs> we don't like it. But by the fact that you don't like it, you just keep it more, you know. So this is a time to listen, to do breathing, to actually feel what's underneath to actually go deeper. And that's the point that self-healing comes from both listening, attuning to what's going on with care and love, and then taking action. So, so these are the two <laughs> state of yin and yang. And um, uh, wow, I talked for a long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to also open it to... Um, to the group and uh you know i'm, I'm just gonna read one one quote from the Tao Te ching the first verse of the Tao Te ching i don't know I'm, i just open it to question just general question it could be about the subject or something that you're dealing with emotionally or or it could be anything but i'll just read one thing and then i'll open the conversation free from desire you realize the mystery caught in desire you see only the manifestation. Free from desire, you realize the mystery. Caught in desire, you see only the manifestation. And that kind of ties into what we talked about <laughs> a little bit. Uh, very beautiful, the Tao Te Ching. Okay, anybody wants to kind of chime in on something or ask a question? It's okay if not, I can continue, but uh, I'd like to open it to anybody that wants to kind of participate in any way. Yes, Edward. So in, in the beginning, and thank you for this, I really got so much out of the conversation and new fresh stuff. I love when you give us new fresh <laughs> stuff. And you know, I've been dealing with my friend who has pancreatic cancer mm -hmm. and I've Sorry. been giving him what you're saying to me i've been giving to him and as i texted you the other day uh they thought he had from pancreatic cancer to liver cancer they did all these tests and everything came through negative mm -hmm. because he's doing the way she breathing right <laughs> you know so this so works to everyone listening this works and Thank you. In, yeah in in the context of that um Yesterday, and I didn't get the result yet, he had one last uh, MRI, but they said there's no big tumor in the liver, there's nothing there, he can go forward with the experimental, you know, chemo, his voice is so strong, and in the context, 
you know, of what you just said. I put all this stuff together and you've done so much for me and for, for others that, that I know. And I know, you know, Chuck and his daughter want to work with you privately, but it's working. What you're saying is real and it's a transformation of healing. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Yeah. And I just want to say about the Wei Chi breathing. Thank you for teaching him that practice. It's, it's a, a very powerful breathing technique. It's, it's very gentle. It's very soft. It's, it's very, very nourishing. You know, about cancer, I'm just going to say these two things because maybe other people listening that are dealing or have relatives with cancer, you really want to know, uh, you know, there's a, a, a doctor that won a Nobel Prize and he won a Nobel Prize for finding out that cancer cannot survive in an oxygen-rich environment. So you can look it up. The it's Google this doctor. Uh, cancer cannot survive in an oxygen-rich environment. And a lot of the disease are, we, we finding that is malnourished with oxygen. So when oxygen doesn't get into the cells, when oxygen doesn't get into the lymphatic system, things just die. It's, you know, oxygen is, you think about it as vitamin O. You know, it's, it's, it's the very, very crucial. I mean, it's the first form of, of chi, of postnatal chi that we can, I mean, two minutes without breathing and, and that's it. So it's, it's not like food, you can stay for a long time. Water, you can stay for a long time, but air is, is you just, you're just going to die. Yeah. So, so, um, so a lot of people that suffer from any ailments, I would give them the way chi breathing, the, the technique. And, um, we're going to teach it in the, in the workshop about the lung uh, and improving the immune system because the breath and the lung connect to the immune system in Chinese medicine. So the resilience, if anybody wants to do some practices daily for this and they don't know the technique of Wei Chi breathing, just deep abdominal breathing would be really good. Uh, and the resilience course on my platform. So if you type resilience.chiwideli.com, there's a whole set of practices to open the lungs. And they're beautiful, they're fun, and they're easy. There's uh, eight videos, I think, uh, of 20 minutes, and each one open the lungs in a different, in a different way. And you're really, you're really breathing and moving in a very gentle way. The, way we, the, 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 the fact that we move very slow in Qigong, is to is to let the oxygen sit through and not to and you know be mindful yeah so these breathing techniques are, are really powerful because they're soft they're slow when you go soft and slow the mind calms down you know when we breathe slow because what is the stress response is very quickly right rush 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 and if you it's very easy just breathe slow just start to breathe to cultivate a deep breathing a very slow just go slow and it goes against the rushing of the mind, you know, that goes very quickly. So if you go slow, all of a sudden the mind is like, hey, <laughs> and then it's, 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 it's kind of, it, it calms you down and then you release stress and tension. So it's, it's a very easy technique in the way to kind of build on that, on that, what you just said. Thank it's you. Really a, so it, it's really a powerful thing too, when you can actually take control of your body's auditory Auto, automatic, you know, responses. It's like, it's really empowering. You know, when you actually, I mean, like when I'm, again, out on my bike, but you know, I'm like, <sighs> and when I actually take slow, deliberate breaths, I mean, it's, I mean, that gives me energy in and of itself. Cause I was like, wow, I can actually control this. You know, I, I feel more energized and I feel more energized. It's like, I'm adding on top of, you know, it's just, it's, um, what's the word I want? compounding you mm -hmm. know i'm getting extra benefit from the breathing in that i'm actually feeling more powerful because i'm able to control you know what my body tells me i have to do and it's like no i don't have to do this so it's a mm -hmm. you know deciding differently than what our mind wants to do is a really powerful thing yes thank you and and when we when we feeling good like we're feeling nourished the breath is deep we we sleep better we, all these things then we can we can free our mind to actually work with also the formless energy with thoughts or emotions better. Because when are you, when are you really, um, 
you know, when you don't sleep so well or you, 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 you didn't breathe very deeply and somebody cuts you off on the road, then you get upset. But if you have a lot of, you, you're taking care of your energy, you have ample of energy in your body, then you can be more mindful. You can cultivate mindfulness and then you can look, oh, maybe I can look at this differently. Maybe I can look, you have energy reservoirs that you can start creating a better, a better life, a better, you can work with, with, with the energy of, of your emotions, of your mind a little better. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's kind of our job, like what you said, Dan, to like keep, keep ourselves vital, keep us, and, and it, it's not that hard. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it is, it takes a commitment, but you know, one teacher told me a commitment is the, is a commitment is the, is the gateway to deepening your practice to, to, to for depth, for depth of any kind. Commitment is depth. With commitment, you get depth. Um, yeah, because sometimes we say, oh, we're going to do this or we're going to, and we're doing it and then we're not continuing. And when we always stay on the surface and with commitment, you can start to, to go deeper into, into what you're committing to, well, whatever it is. I mean, it could be just, it could be anything, right? So uh, I think that's a kind of a nice, nice teaching. Um, all right. So that was, that was fun. Um, half an hour passed so quickly. <laughs> I just want to open, if anybody wants to kind of share anything or ask something, please, please do before we close. It's just, uh, it's just, just going like to say, um, I do it because I feel better mm -hmm. that it's a commitment, but then it's like, I feel so much better every time I do a practice. It's like, I don't really need anything more than that to get me to want to do it. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. That's nice. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, um, Thank you. So that was the kind of like, uh, so we let, let's close the conversation and, and, and also a little practice. Um, but just kind of, I wanted to share if anybody wants to uh, learn more, uh, please email me or join class. It's, it's really powerful. It's really healing. It's releasing stress and tension. You can have more brain space to your energy. So this is a little bit about chi and a little bit about energy healing. Uh, we, I can, we can talk about different aspects of it next time, but that's kind of like uh, the beginning. There's no good or bad. It is what it is. <laughs> you give meaning to, to life. You, you give meaning to life. The way you see things is creating the, cr creating the, the future. And it's so powerful and it's overlooked because we don't see something that formless energy is the most powerful energy, by the way, to work with the belief, thoughts, emotions, and embracing everything. And, you know, that's one of the things you, Edward, are, are, are uh, advocate for, like say yes to everything comes your way. It's really a message of embracing and, and there's no good or bad and everything here for a reason. And all we can do is to, to, uh, to work with it consciously with, with openness. And because if we keep that area open, if we keep uh, yeah, we can heal ourselves with a higher vibration of love and joy and peace. And if we can, uh, even though that's a hard practice sometimes for some of us, the practice of Qigong, the practice of breathing can get us into the space, uh, that space that we can really, when, whenever we become closer to, yeah, we, we, a lot of time we talk about the light, you know, in, in, uh, in energy emission, we talk about light. Yeah, about God energy. Well, God energy is light and love. And if we can come closer to that energy, if you want to be, if you want to, if you want to be able to self-heal, you want to amplify your energy to love, joy, peace. And we can do that. And when we can do that, we can self-heal. When we are matching the energy of the light, of, of God, if you want, or in Chinese, they call it Hanyuan, and it's all energy. There's no God. Yeah, there's, uh, there's energy, this uh, called the source energy. And it's all um, expanded energy. Yeah, so we want to expand our energy, then we can connect to that energy and channel it and send healing energy. 
maybe we can talk about it a little bit more next time about about uh, how to do that. But working with Qigong would be a, a definitely a way, a first step for for getting into this zone of of self help and self heal. All right, so let's uh, let's do a short uh, short closing. Let's rub our hands. <laughs> Create some chi between our hands and put it on somewhere that you feel you need to send some healing energy to. Wherever you feel like you need to send energy to. Yeah, you can put the lungs, the heart, the brain, and just smile. Just put a little smile on your face and connect to the heavenly energy above you the earth be beneath you. And as you're expanding your attention to encompass a bigger energy field, connect to the energy of love, peace, and joy, and trust the universe for the energy to flow through you. Be receptive, kind of like open yourself to be receptive to the heavenly energy the earth energy, and then sending love to the area you're sending it to and see that area get rejuvenated, repaired, strong, vital, and see that organ or that area you're sending energy to kind of floating in love and light and connected to the energy field all around you. So if you send energy to your heart or to the wherever it is, you see like the heart and you see the sky above you and the earth below and they're just opening, rejuvenating, aligning, harmonizing. And say, and look into that organ, to this area. Smile to it and see if you can get a smile back, like a gratitude from this area. Acknowledgement of you of that area brings acknowledgement from the area back to you. And when you have this two-way traffic is when you create healing energy. And you really feel that when you're intimately connected, there's a flow. Nice. Let's close like that. Beautiful. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending it. Thank you for keeping this going. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Thank